be the proclaimer of the Holy Gospel according to the Holy <laughs> Apostle and Evangelist Luke. God, to the name of the Holy Glorious, all laudable Apostle and Evangelist Luke, grant you that the proclaiming great power of speech for the fulfillment of the Gospel of His beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Wisdom, let us listen to the Holy Gospel. The reading is from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Glory to you. The Lord told this parable. A certain man gave a great supper, and he invited many. And he sent his servant at supper time to tell those who were invited to come, for everything is now ready. And they at all, with one accord, began to excuse themselves. The first said to him, I have bought a field, and I must go out and see it. Please hold me excused. And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen, and I am on my way to try them. Please hold me excused. And another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. And the servant returned and reported these things to his master. Then the master of the house became angry and said to his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and to the lanes of the city, and bring in here the poor and the crippled and the lame and the blind. And the servant said, Sir, your order has been carried out, and still there is more room. Then the master said to the servant, Go out into the highways and to the hedges and make them come in, so that my house may be filled. For I tell you that none of those who were invited shall taste of my supper. For many are called, but few are chosen. Glory to you, o Lord. Glory to you. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now and ever unto the ages of the ages. Amen. Side note, I have resolved for Christmas, the church is buying us a new gospel stand that doesn't sound like a food cart. Somebody's telling you right now, so when you see the expenditure, you'll know what happened. Um, so if you've been around me very long, you know I like little uh, phrases, right? Um, don't take personally what... Very good, very good. Thank you, Pray Tassa. Um, and I have a whole bunch, you know... Um, that you might not know, but uh, I, I have them. And uh, one of them is is that we do what we want. We do what we want to do. And today what we see is a, a picture where <clears throat> three different circumstances where the person is giving a good excuse of why they can't come to the great banquet, the great feast that's being offered to them. And the first one says, I think it's the first one, says, um, you know, I just... Uh, bought a new field so I can't go and I got to go check it out and make sure it looks, it's the right thing and I, the second one says I just bought a team of oxen or in today's vernacular I just bought a new tractor and so I have to make sure it, it runs right and, and the third one says um, I just got married and uh, kind of like the phrasing is different there because I think it's almost like the plight of the Lord's going to understand that one <laughs> and so but it's, and so I was thinking about how we can remember this, and it's really, it gets down to is, um, their excuses are about work, wealth, and a woman. But I would say, lest you think that I'm letting you off the hook, man. No, it's, it's, uh, it's about relationships. It's about family. It's about uh, that there's these reasons why these three different people have said that there's a good reason why they should not, they should be excused from the great banquet. But what we probably don't really understand in our context here is, is the significance of this great banquet. This great banquet has gone from, you know, the, uh, the ruler is inviting all the people to come, and it's not just the people that are politically um, aligned with him, if you will. You know, so, so much of what is done today in the world um, is politically motivated. How does this look for me politically, you know? And so, but no, rather this is they're inviting people throughout the community. And when they find out that there are people that are making excuses, the master says to his servant, says, well, go tell these other people. Go tell this other rung of society. 
And so he goes and he tells another group of people and, and uh, goes back and he said, well, they're coming. But we still got all kinds of table space. And so the ruler says, well, go out into the highways, the byways, the alleyways. Go into the neighborhoods of Phoenix that you wouldn't normally go to and invite these people to come to my banquet. He's opened the doors for the banquet. But he's angry as well about the people who have rejected the banquet. And so in the context of the scripture today, what we're really seeing is we're seeing that it's the Jewish people have rejected, uh, Jewish rulers have rejected this invitation from the, the master, the, the invitation from Christ to come to the kingdom, to come to the table. And so what God does is he opens the doors wide open. And we are the beneficiaries of those doors having been flung wide open, you and I. But you know, there's a significant truth here, and it is, is that we do what we want to do. And oftentimes what we do is not best for us. And oftentimes we make decisions to do what we do because we don't really understand the value of what we've been invited to do. And that's the scene here, is, is that they've devalued this invitation to come to the banquet, to come to the table. And so they're not highly motivated the way that you would expect them to be because there's other things that they have deemed are more important. And as a result, they miss out. And then in the end, it says many are called. In other words, I sent out the invitation to everybody, but few are chosen. And so what we have here is a picture of people that have rejected what they've been invited to. And that's the world that we live in today, and it's the world of yesterday, and it's the world of tomorrow. So oftentimes, we don't respond to what we've been invited to. And we have to ask the question, what have we been invited to? We've been invited to the banquet table of Christ. And so to the point where there's a large red book, I, it might be a copy over here, it's called The Banquet Table or The Banquet Hall or something like that that the, uh, His Eminence wrote the forward to, and it's all about the divine liturgy. We've been invited to the banquet of the Lord to come and to come to his table and to receive of him. And so we have to come to the place where we value that above all else. We see the value of coming to his table as being greater than anything else that's competing with it in our world. You know, oftentimes we make excuses, and then after we make excuses, we feel bad about the excuses and the decisions we've made, right? Somebody once said, if we broke as uh, many promises to our friends as we break promises to ourselves, we'd have no friends. We say, oh, I'm going to do this, and then we don't do it. And so this morning, I was thinking about them making a choice to not respond to the call of the Lord, and I thought, well, what's, what's the answer? And the answer may lie in uh, the Big Blue Book by Alcoholics Anonymous. And what do they say in there? They say, take the body and the mind will follow. Take the body where it needs to go. Place yourself in the place you need to be, and your mind will follow. Your mind will say afterwards, oh, I'm so glad I did what I chose to do. Because I was having a dialogue inside whereby I really didn't want to do that. Anybody else ever experienced that? You may have experienced it this morning. Oh, it'd be so nice to just hang out at home, and if, you know... Oh, if only it wasn't Lent, we could have some bacon and eggs <laughs> and to stay, you know. Um, you might not want to come to serve somebody, to be involved in some activity, but then when you take your body, your mind comes along as well. <laughs> and I can tell you, there are many times, even as the priest, I know this is scandalous, but there's times as, as the priest where I don't want to go do what I'm supposed to go do. But I can tell you there are very, very few times that I do what I'm supposed to do that I say, oh, I still wish I hadn't done it. No, I always say, I'm so glad I did. I'm so glad I did. So what's the, what's the lesson here? The lesson is, is that we need to, first off, 
understand the great value that God has given to us in Eucharist, in coming to his table, in being invited to the banquet when others have rejected it. Then number two, we need to not be just driven by our wants and our desires. We need to be able to make decisions that say, in spite of what I want to do, I'm going to do this. I'll conclude with this story because it makes me look good. Um, <laughs> kind of, maybe, sort of. <coughs> Myself and 12 uh, men, I would say young men, but Dean was with us. And uh, um, so 12 of us men went to the monastery. And so Friday night we're there, and, and I said, uh, now listen, there's a divine liturgy at 1.30, and some of you are probably going to want to go to the 1.30 liturgy, and we're sitting around this little fountain, and I said, who wants to, who's going to go to the 1.30 liturgy? And like, almost all the hands went up. And I'm like, oh boy. <laughs> because immediately, what am I feeling? I'm feeling pressure, you know. But then I went on and said, you know, well, there's also a 7 a.m. more user-friendly divine liturgy uh, for the people that are local that live around here. And, you know, based on my work schedule and everything else, I'll probably just go to the 7 a.m. liturgy. And as I looked around the room, I thought, you know, I get youthful exuberance, but I'm not youthful anymore, and I'm not always that exuberant. But I looked around the, the uh, fountain, and I thought, oh, my gosh, they're all going to go. And so about 12.30, quarter till 1, I got up and I started getting ready. And uh, I walked over there and a couple of the young men came up and I said, you didn't think for a minute I was going to let you go and not me go, did you? Am I thankful that I went? Yes. Was I tired? Yes. I'm sure several heads are nodding right now. Were you tired? Yes. Were you glad you went? Yes. Sometimes, oftentimes, decisions that say no to our comfort are the very decisions that help us to grow in the grace and knowledge of God. We didn't really want to do that, but we decided to do it because the Lord had invited us to come and do that. So this morning, just simply say, for all of us, myself first, let's not live by our comfort. Let's live by our commitment and a response to the invitation that God has given us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.